This week in the restroom, we get our Irish on for a vengeance-fueled action turn from 2009. We've got theme park accents, Irish Gandalf, Daryl Dixon, after-the-fact action scenes, and writer-director Troy Duffy stroking the biggest hard-on for Quentin Tarantino's work ever captured on film. It's the Boondock Saints 2, All Saints Day. And before we flush it, we're going to take it out and play with it a little. it so you don't have to see it. Greetings everyone, I am Honor Knight, your head cinematic flusher right here in the restroom. As always, I'm joined by my lovely co-cinematic flushers, Midwest movie mogul Colleen Griffin. Hey, hey, hey. Raging Buddha B movie queen, Nora Crest. What's up? And sassy cinephile, Sarah Poulton. Hi. Also joining us as part of our extended cold flushing team this time out are the podcasting hosts for More Brains and The Degenerate Show. Please welcome back Degenerate John and Dee Dee. Hey. Yo, what's up? <laughs> Good to be back. Let's kick off this flush with a round of Thunder Dump. Thunder Dump. I'll put 60 seconds on the restroom clock and we're going to go around the cinematic bowl to see who has the worst alternate title for this week's cinematic turd. The loser will then get to read the RSS, that's Restroom Stall Stats, in a funny voice of my choosing. Here we go. Griff! The Judd Father. Oh boy. Uh, Crest! Boondock Saints 2, Mas Macho with tacos. <laughs> Bolton! Booncock Paints. Oh, Jesus right. Christ. John! Three men and a bottle! Fuck off, Paul. I had the Boon Dick Taints to All Taints Day. Work on that, folks. Oh. Oh. Ouch. <laughs> the patron saints of casual homophobia. Oh, not bad, not bad, Crest. Boondock Saints 2. No one can do an accent. <laughs> Bolton? Speedo to cruise control. <laughs> <laughs> All right. uh, John? This ain't the Walking Dead. This sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and I had two Irishmen walk into a location and kill everyone. That's like a start of a there joke there. Yeah, I know. All right, Griffin. A time to kill a franchise. <laughs> uh, 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 that is time. That is time, folks. Wow. Only a couple a couple good ones and a lot of bad ones this time out. This is a, this is a real tough call. Really, it's down between uh, Crest and uh, Griffin, as it as usually as is. As usual. Uh, yeah, Crest had it last yeah. week. so I guess, I'm sorry, Griffin had it last week, so we're going to go with uh, okay. this one. All right, so there you go, Crest is the loser this time. She's going to read the uh, RSSS restroom stall stats in the voice of your own. Because there was so many bad accents in this film, just, all you have to do is read it straight. Now I'm not even sure how I'm supposed to sound, because that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, like off, say, man. It's, like, yeah, it's like when you say a word so many times that right? it no longer makes sense. I don't, yeah. Ugh, why do I have to talk about this terrible movie? All right, The Boondock Saints 2, All Saints Day, is a 2009 American vigilante film written and directed by Troy Duffy, also co-written by his fucking douchebag brother, by the way. The film serves as a sequel to the 1999 film Boondock Saints. The film stars Sean Patrick Flannery and Norman Reedus, who does way better work on The Walking Dead, and he should just stick to that, who will return to their roles, as well as several other actors from the first film who had no jobs to return to whatsoever. So... <laughs> The film takes place oh eight years after the events of the original Boondock Saints, you know, because now they have cell phones and still crappy haircuts and all that stuff, so it looks exactly the same. <laughs> As a fraternal twin siblings, which we're supposed to believe, even though one of the actors is way older than the other, <laughs> Connor Flannery and Murphy, Re Murphy Reedus are living a quiet life in Ireland with Jesus wigs and beards, and their father, <laughs> the former assassin known as Il Duce, which for some reason an Irish guy has a Spanish name. I don't know. However, they are drawn back into action. <laughs> no, isn't some... that Italian? Oh, you're right. It is Italian. However, they're drawn back into action after someone attempts to frame the brothers for the murder of a priest in Boston. The duo travel back to the United States via steamboat because apparently that's the only way to get <laughs> to and from Ireland, uh, where they meet some <laughs> old friends that are pursued by Eunice Bloom, played by Julie Benz, an FBI agent whose boobies are hanging out for the whole fucking movie and she wears her gun in front of her cooter for some other reason and former protege of Agent Smacker. 
There you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, wow. yeah. There we go. FYI, I, FYI, guys, Agent Smecker was played by Willem Dafoe in the first Yes, yes. I pay attention to that. All right, there you go. There's your art. So we don't really need to do the episode because she pretty much cut the whole film. Uh, I don't understand the movie for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, if you're not a whiskey drinker before watching this film, you will be after. Oh, man. <laughs> There's a lot of whiskey. Uh, hey, Quentin Tarantino called. He'd like you to stop dick-sucking all of his work, please. This, is, this movie's a complete love letter to Quentin Tarantino. But it's not Every- even a good love no, letter because no, they can't not. write. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are two types of people in this world. Uh, one would be actors delivering voiceover with a horrible accent, and the other would be dudes walking around with Honor Knight's hair still thinking that was a badass look. Right? <laughs> 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 I was like, hey! But, uh, he stole my hair, bastard. Uh, then he goes, just walks into a church. That's really the opening. There's a little bit of uh, narration we got to go right to Ireland, and I wrote that in capitals, where the land is green, and the extras from Braveheart take a smoke break atop of their horses. Do you remember in Robin Hood Men in Tights when they were given <laughs> beards when they had to go into prison? That's what those beards looked like. Though oh, I boy. agree. That was pretty bad. I guess uh, we now know what really happened to Powder and Daryl Dixon. He was Powder? Powder. That's Powder, believe it or not. Yeah. No. I know. Was. Oh, yeah, no, I, okay, 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 I was yeah, so annoyed yeah. by his performance, I didn't want to know anything else about him. So I just no, didn't. he was in that movie with that horrible, horrible rom-com with sarah michelle geller and i 90s. love that movie stop it <laughs> <laughs> rita and uh mr flannery played the two uh assassins the irish assassins that are e- exiled self-exiled and they're and, paternal and, twin brothers yeah and they're with their father billy Conn. we'll get them in a minute uh first of all the real question i have to ask was this the uh, opening scene that rita's is acting in was that his audition reel for the walking dead because he is flat out terrible in this film this is the uh, sequel so yeah, that's real. That's even, even worse. I can't imagine what he was like in the no, first. I, I I got the feeling he was embarrassed. The embarrassed. <laughs> yeah. Spoiler alert. During the end death scene, he looked like he was like trying not to laugh and like oh, it's yeah, that, yeah. Nerve, that nervous, embarrassed laughter. Yeah, there's some. I don't. Oh, I thought he was just really like I I have seen him in the Walking Dead briefly, but and he was much better there. I don't understand uh, what he was. I don't think he really. Maybe they just didn't really want to do this film. The first one is basically what kind of launched his career. Yeah. And so I think he felt so, a sort of like. Just obligation, I guess. Well, it's I, yeah. years later. <laughs> it's so crazy. Anyway. They were supposed to, these guys uh, get word that uh, a Boston priest was killed, executed in the style that they used to do uh, to, in an effort to kind of lure them out. So they're just getting you know, word of this here in Ireland. Uh, and then there's a line that says, uh, it was back. I could see it in their eyes. And I said I couldn't. I actually couldn't even see their eyes because I was so distracted by the Lord of the Rings uh, hair and beard. Uh, there was a moth on his sweater. Did you notice that? Yeah, there was a moth right by his hair. Yeah, there was a moth like on his sweater there. That, that was very distracting. Yeah. No, like, no, no, I couldn't get over the angry eating. Like, did it say in the script eats angrily? Probably. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I was focused on the moth. Billy Connolly, we should mention, plays the father of these two guys, and he is decked out like an Irish Gandalf. That's, <laughs> I kept waiting for him to bust out the one ring or the one Irish ring. I don't know. I don't know. know. He, he, he looks like Terrible. Santa. No, he looks like Santa Claus's no good brother. Well, I got like a Moby Dick Ahab kind of feel mm-hmm. from that with the sweater and everything that, you know, I expected him to say, you know, call me Ishmael. Well, well first oh. of all, Billy Connolly just looks like this in real life. I mean, they just basically like he came into set with that hair and his beard. That's just how he wears his shit now all the time. Boston, the only city in America where a priest can uh, get killed by someone with a supercut's hair and the sound of King Kong belching over the soundtrack at a three minute mark. The actual murder was really bizarro. And I don't know what sound was coming out of that those amps, but it wasn't right. It was like a, it was weird. Oh, no, 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 no. It was it was those um that oh. chanting that oh the monks yeah like the Gregorian the chant the, 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 no the throat the Buddhist monk oh yeah throat. oh yeah yeah, yeah. Oh. so I'm like why, <laughs> why? Gotta, like a Catholic gotta... church would have Buddhist monk chanting well, why would you well what? but it was like what goes on in that guy's head and by the way do you know who that guy is remember Mean Girls Lindsay Lohan's first day. When that guy comes up to her in the cafeteria and asks her if she would like her muffin buttered. Oh, is that the guy? <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. God. And he really is guy? super short. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about him. Yeah, that's the guy. Really? All right. Uh, only one problem with this plan. It worked. And that's the, that's the effort to lure them out and get them back to Boston. Uh, guys, cue generic rock song as we watch uh, Norman Reedus and Flannery 
clean up like they're on their way to an Irish barn dance at the five minutes. That was so funny, that part. They have no scissors <laughs> at <laughs> all in Ireland. Oh, boy. I know. And the, yeah, no cell phones, no scissors. Like, no the, okay, but then it's, they it's, back it's, the five o'clock shadow Sunday after Sunday. having shaved off their big shaggy beards. They all had a little bit of five o'clock shadow, which was funny. I, that's too. Awesome. I'm sorry, but Amish communities have more technology. <laughs> <laughs> they are all showering up, and we get to see their asses. So, ladies, I guess you yeah, smoke to you. Mm-hmm. Those are good asses are well except for one yeah. lady dude she can still appreciate i can appreciate milk. a good ass but i was not <laughs> impressed i was too, right. i was too busy really looking at the terrible though. fake not tattoos on their back happy. john was that your highlight too was he oh yeah to see daryl dixon's ass <laughs> but can i just say something why why have these <laughs> terrible <laughs> fake tattoos all over them <laughs> it gets worse too <laughs> Does, yeah, they do i have- was not looking at the tattoos Oh, Poland, we know. Yeah, I know. Uh, the tattoos were incredibly fake looking. They're we should so mention that. For bad. people who have tattoos, uh, yeah, we can pretty much call that one out. Uh, so anyway, they get cleaned up. Uh, well, here's the next line. He said, exactly what you intend to do. Well, hopefully you never cut your hair and shave with garden shears again, uh, Dee Dee. Although they, these two idiots look like they just stepped out of the hair and makeup trailer. Why does Daryl constantly have the basic lesbian haircut? <laughs> fringe going for I, I feel like I want to pull him aside like sweetie you are not a woman you can you have to take that Ellen 2.0 haircut and like get rid of it <laughs> well and I'm sorry Sean Patrick Flannery you need to cool it on the fillers and who showers in a barn since I don't even know how that plumbing is rigged up I know why would they have a shower inside the barn they're not like washing the sheep are they I've never been to Ireland but I'm pretty sure they have indoor plumbing like oh, proper they indoor do. plumbing they do oh, trust me Oh, boy. The Boondock Saints 2, All Saints Day, because the Boondock Saints 2 electric boogaloo was already taken. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, and because but, uh, police, yeah, and because Wow, you really pulled that one from... Well, oh, no, and because Police Academy 8 was already taken. <laughs> <laughs> Griffin with an early win. That was... Wow. wow. <laughs> Moving. Um, actually, before we keep moving, Griffin, what is the goddamn backstory of this? Because you said it was so rich of how this film came about in the first one. The director, Troy Duffy, he was a bartender who and uh, like aspiring screenplay writer who had the screenplay that somehow in 1997, Harvey Weinstein found out about and optioned it for like $300,000. That was back when Miramax was, like, the hot place for upcoming independent films. Okay, this guy had never been to film school, never done anything in the film industry. And he also got signed by William Morris Agency. Wow. For doing nothing. Yeah, basically. And he was also also in a band. And um, he worked at a bar in L.A. And he convinced Weinstein to buy the bar, like, so he could, like, own the bar. And... He said, oh, this is going to be my shot, and this is going to be amazing to get on film. So he had friends record all of this. He proceeded to drink and drug his way through all his money. Jesus. They met with everybody. Ethan Hawke, Keanu Reeves, Mark wow. Wahlberg, Ewan McGregor, Stephen Dorff, and I think Brad Pitt. Jesus. Wow. The Willem Dafoe role, they... Offered it to Stallone, Patrick Swayze, Robert De Niro, Kenneth Branagh, and Kevin Spacey. Oh Jesus. my God! Wow! I can see Kevin Spacey. This movie would have been amazing. The reason they passed on it wasn't because of the script. It was because he was such like if you look up hubris in the dictionary, you'll see <laughs> oh, wow. you will see it'll say see also Duffy comma Troy. There's a 2003 documentary um called uh. Overnight, and I think that's actually more interesting. He insisted on them filming him, no matter how awful he was. This guy is like narcissist supreme. That means he's also just a so eventually, well, eventually Miramax killed the project, and wow. he had to pick it up. Like he had, he had to like desperately like panhandle it to another distribution, like another studio who would greenlight it. So that's how it became this thing. <laughs> Yeah, the thing that could have been wow. great. Wow. This explains a lot then for the sequel, because obviously whatever he got through with the first film, he completely blows it in this film. The ominous question hangs in the air. Are they back? Uh, like Millie and Vanilli back or Meatloaf back? I'm not sure. Oh. Like they do end up coming back to Boston. And uh, they, we have these three uh, uh, cop idiots. We're going to talk about them. Uh, one says, we are totally fucked. I'm not going to do the Irish accents. They're all bad Irish accents. We're going to talk well, about that. Well, first of all, they don't have uh, any no, Irish they're, they're accents. They have Irish. Boston accents. 
they're really bad Boston accents. Uh, I don't know the one, and I remember him from the first movie. Uh, the one who looks kind of like um, the long-haired douchebag. No, not the long-haired one. The short-haired one. Um, That's not Greenlee. The... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was okay. He's actually a stand-up comedian, and his name is Bob Marley. There are the three Boston cops that are involved in this. And, of course, Julie Benz is an FBI agent, shows up, and then the line is, uh, let's rock this bitch, as opposed to rocking this horrible music, which is, I'm sure is courtesy of Troy Duffy, or veteran actor Julie Benz's terrible Southern accent. Can I just say oh something about God. her accent? She was like God. Forrest Gump and Wheezy had a baby. <laughs> Oh, oh, my. Oh, my. I was thinking of Steel Magnolias the right? whole time. <laughs> She's flat out terrible. In fact, it was a bad hair choice. Her hair color was awful. Uh, She's like a hooker. And I'll tell you, I have a line about that She's coming up here. We haven't quite got her on she, screen. She, yet. Walk, no, she uh, walked up like she was in an 80s music video. Yeah. Oh. I thought her opening lines were so crazy. I couldn't imagine someone actually writing them down. And I Googled the script. Because did I not. didn't believe what I, I'm not kidding. I literally have it up right now because I did not believe that what she said was a real thing that someone okay. put down in writing. It was, okay. wasn't it? Okay, Sarah, watch overnight and it will make total sense. Uh, and that was the next line. It says, I make, I make, well, this is part of that thing. I make smart people feel like they're, re they're retarded. As opposed to screenwriter no. and director Troy he, he was actually retarded for thinking uh, he's written smart people dialogue. Think well, about first that, of all, I, uh, I had to keep track of how many times he used the word retarded well, in I his script it. here. Yeah, the only no, thing that he didn't do that would have been Tarantino-esque is use the N-word because that's Tarantino's oh, staple. Everything else is. Actually, I haven't seen this much bad writing since I was inside a restroom stall in Irish like, Dive. Me and my sister Here's and my stepbrother and my stepsister, the four of us used to like write plays that we would then record and like perform for our neighbors and that was when I was like 10 and that shit was way better than this. So. <laughs> Nora, I can't well, tell I you how say... much I agree and I haven't seen it. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, well, and, I, and I will say I need to watch this. Don't do it. I need Don't to watch... do it. No, I need to watch the first one. I do it's need so to see good. it. It's so good. See? The first, the first one, one is actually... amazing. It's funny. It's got everything. Like it's got the funny moments. It's got the drama. It's got the action. This is garbage. <laughs> well, it's garbage. And people have the obsession with like calling people gay and. Well, yeah, let me just hard. let me just say I... this as a word of advice to any female listener out there: If you're on a first date, here's a way to weed out the total psychopath. Just say, have you ever <laughs> oh seen my. like Boondock Saints too? Dude. If they're like, I fucking love that movie. You're like, oh, check please. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just know that guy's a psychopath, misogynistic, homophobic Check piece of shit. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of homophobia in oh this movie. God. I agree. Yeah. yeah. I uh, shout out to my new office mate, Thelma. I was like, I'm gonna go watch Boondock Saints. She's like, that movie's so great. And I was like, no, the second one. And she was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Phil mistakenly steps up uh, Benz to be a high-end call girl until she opens her mouth. And uh, speaking of that, uh, Paul, you want to take a crack at that monologue in her voice or what? Is it because I'm so fucking smart that I make smart people feel like retards? Now, we seem to be getting off on the wrong foot here. I appreciate a bit of cooperation. There's a little, there's a little uh, clip. Way better did. than what she did. It's oh, way funny. Is it? Yeah, is I think it's serious? about no, exactly what she did. It's, <laughs> no, it's like Elizabeth Taylor on Cat on a Hot Tin Roof combined with Forrest Gump. Oh, wow. Yeah, Forrest oh, Gump. Yeah. For, These yeah. lines are so stupid. She oh, immediately my. goes, fuck, this isn't a fuck situation, <laughs> is it? Because someone says the word <laughs> fuck. No, what the fuck is that? <laughs> Somebody was like, there's not enough fucks in this movie. I need you guys to rewrite this to put some more fucks in it's here. It's all Quentin Tarantino <laughs> style. All Donald Trump, Trump deleted Trump. tweets. Uh, 50 on the Mexican. Uh, if you can rock a mullet on a cargo ship, you are a bad motherfucker. <laughs> the 11 minute mark. That's he that was hilarious. Clifton Collins so is the best the thing in this movie, hands down. John should have definitely been offended. Um, this character. Uh, first of all, John, what period were you wearing your uh, mullet? Uh, let's see here. That would have been 87 before it, my, grew, my hair grew, actually grew out, and I was a total straight-up <laughs> metalhead kid in high school. So. Oh, no. What I thought when I saw him was like, see, this is the Joe Dirt sequel we deserved. <laughs> oh, boy. Film, uh, sucks when you stop at cold to showcase a recreation of the airport fight from Raiders of the Lost Ark. So they're on the cargo ship. At the, they can't, apparently just, they couldn't get a flight. Uh, from Ireland back to the right. Boston because uh, yeah, well, they're all the trying flights to are... smuggle themselves into the country. They obviously had the network to get just to get a fucking flight. I don't agree with this cargo ship. No, just well, to... it doesn't it, make any sense. TSO guys. In, their, in, their, in their defense, they got away because it was pre nine eleven. 
<laughs> and I said that C- Clifton Curtis Jr. is uh, the Joe Pesci of this Clifton mess. Clifton Collins Jr. Oh, uh, that too. He's the Joe Pesci of this mess. Think that one out, though, folks. No, no he no, is no. not. Uh, anyway, he he wins this fight, folks. Uh, they're on a cargo ship. There's a, there's a typical fight scene. You, you know, everybody takes bets, and, and two guys beat the shit out of each other. Um, we've seen this, you know, and uh, he just wins it to prove himself, and he ends up teaming up with these two Irish idiots a little bit later on. But that's why he's here. He's got this. Uh, he's got this Mexican mullet. It's a Joe yeah, Dirt. Dirt. It's a Joe Dirt thing. Uh, but he honestly, he is probably the best thing in it, just because everything else is just so unwatchable. That at least whenever he's on screen, he kind of spices up. Unfortunately, he's saddled with that terrible script, so he can only improv so much. Um, he can't get away from that dialogue, that screenwriter dialogue. And I've talked about that in other films. Folks, if you if you wanted a great example of screenwriter dialogue, this film is it. This is what you don't do when you write screenplays. So if there's any inspiring screenwriters, it's Paul <laughs> looking at you. Don't be fucking well, doing this shit. This dialogue is terrible in this film. And I can and do whatever like, I want. She was watching this as like a course study in how to write a screenplay or something. <laughs> well, I literally oh did my. look up the script. And yeah. uh... and, and it's, it's word for word, isn't it? For the most part, I mean, it it's is much... it's word for word, yeah, which is really upsetting. Uh, with all due respect, every time Ben's opens her mouth, I think she's flow from Alice. She would have said during this film, "Kiss my grits." I would have just lost yeah. my shit. I would have lost my awesome. shit. <laughs> okay, and here's, uh, we're back to Crest on this because she's the resident um, uh, costumer on the uh, for these uh, messes. Why is she wearing her gun like it's a belt buckle? Uh, that was my question she... for the whole movie. I was like, that was so expecting law enforcement person puts but... their gun pointed at their own crotch. Who does that? <laughs> I know that was strange. Law for hoo ha. That's not cool. I mean, but, uh, why, yeah. but why though? It's so stupid. That's not any no it does, government it agency does. would allow you to have a holster like that. Well, and also the the variation they do on the way her and way to analyze crime scenes in the first movie it was actually really cool. But here it doesn't. It comes I off. I just as thought really... she was walking around. Like no, in it's a trance different. And I didn't get what she was doing at all. The first movie, Willem Dafoe's character, because she's allegedly his protege, or not allegedly, she is his protege. Uh, he put in his earbuds and listened to classical music. And would just analyze the crime scene. Here, she just puts in earplugs, like standard earplugs. Yeah, and like just little foamy thing. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't music. It was just earplugs. Yeah, that didn't make exactly. sense. Exactly, and that's so lame. Oh my god. You couldn't <laughs> well, even. Get, I think you I couldn't think even it... get like stock music, like approval. Well, like... no, all the music was from Troy Duffy. I'm sure in his band. Oh my god, know. the music was. Yeah, but they actually terrible. did it though. The music in the first one was actually decent. Uh, did, did the music bug you? You're the musician of the group here. I mean, not music... a whole lot, actually. I, wow. I, I didn't mind it. I mean, it just sounded it like a, a a fake flogging Molly or a drop kick movie. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> cheap, uh, generic yeah, version yeah. of it. But right. I wasn't offended or anything. I, I, it was just mediocre. What about these saints fuckers uh, or these stock mob characters that look like they were borrowed from one of the Punisher films at the 17 minute mark? Now we got to have the scene because now they're, they're getting word they might be back in town. We get the Italian mobs got that meeting where they're eating around the table. You've seen the scene before. Uh, these sons of bitches prison fucked us. <laughs> Another quality line there, folks. In case you were wondering uh, what the adult version of Judd Nelson's character in The Breakfast Club would be like, uh, wonder no more. <laughs> oh my God. I there almost put my Thunder Dump title. What? The, um, <laughs> the, yeah. I almost did a like a variation. Of, what was it? Let me look. The Boondocks Club. Uh, why was he in this film? I mean, I guess they must have got him for nothing. Well, then again, it is Judd Nelson. He was. Just, <laughs> he was they, couldn't, they couldn't get an Italian actor like a to do this. Um, they couldn't the, get some Irish of... actors. Well, no, no. This is the Italian mob we're talking about. No, why but I'm saying they... Norman Reedus and I other fucking guy are Irish, and Billy Connolly's fucking Scottish. Sean Patrick. I will say Sean Patrick Flannery. He's from fucking Louisiana. I know, which means he has no excuse for how garbage his accent but is. But he pro- like, he's probably nor- never even been to Ireland. <laughs> There's a ton of out of work. Um, for sure. Italian yeah. actors that could have done. And he had a, yeah, yeah, and Sean Patrick Flannery had a decade to do some research. I agree. I agree. He could have uh, like yes. learned it. Uh, so he's yeah, folks. He's the he's the heavy. He's one of the heavies in this film. Uh, that shit. He's not the ultimate heavy, but he's he's. And we're calling. I'm putting quote air quotes when I say heavy. Uh, that shit was not funny. Well, at least there was one honest line of dialogue in this movie. I'm gonna put a pop on that. Well, I will both- say, like, I was surprised to see Judd Nelson looking so well. He did not look well in this film. I didn't think he. Oh, I he actually thought, looked I better he than he's okay. looked in a long time. Yeah, that's what I thought too. He didn't look. I thought he looked loaded. fine. He thought he was all right? Okay. This yeah, is, I thought he looked fine. Compared to how he looks now. I liked now. his lines that he was always mispronouncing words. I thought that was funny. 
they know they're coming, and now we're back to the boat. And this is where the Mexican guy, uh, Clifton Curtis, or Clifton Collins, I'm sorry, I keep getting that guy's name wrong. I apologize. Uh, uh, has a, they, he ends up teaming up with these with these kind of guys. And uh, they start having the, the back and forth, and the one line is, uh, this is a great line, folks. Uh, the fact that you're a greasy spick has, has nothing to do with it. Uh, if, an Irish, wait a second, if an Irish person oh. is throwing that line out, is that still considered racist? Yeah. Yes. Yes. All well, right. This is where I told myself, okay, so this is this movie's got to be a comedy, and that's why everybody's the stereotype, and you know, yeah, that's, yeah. Kind of yeah. Nice that's where I was. Like I was it. like, okay, so that's where, yeah, this is kind of where I started I liking the down, movie. Okay, maybe this is this just... is just a comedy. This is supposed to be so over the top and so you know stereotyped that they're like making some meta commentary on you know gangster movies or whatever so no, uh, troy duffy was like single white mailing quentin tarantino well yeah but if that was the case though we i would have been okay with this but i don't think that was the intention of the film i, I think it was this is all played straight it's the intention i got out of it that it was oh, I don't think so it's to over the top um and so ridiculous and that they were kind of making a commentary on um you know, vigilante movies. Yeah. I, you know what? I would agree okay. if it hadn't been for that first movie. One of the main characters was gay in the first movie. So I think maybe that was him. Maybe you're right. Maybe that was his intent, but it, just it, off it way. fell. Oh my God. It came across hard. so wrong. I thought you said your car was inconspicuous. Uh, if you ever want to know what degenerate John drives around on a daily basis, Let's there go you further go. Than 27 minutes. You know I'm coming to Orlando, right? <laughs> ah, ah, are, ra are racist looking VW Bugs standard issue in Mexico, John? Is that oh, <laughs> That car, guys. I mean, you're, this is when you're trying too hard in your film. To, well, you they're know, trying to make a... him stand out as a Mexican from Boston. And apparently <laughs> everyone there thinks they're like, you know, cholos. There wasn't even one like, odale pues. Like, you know, like, fuck, come on. They gave him Sorry, no Mexican I'm lines. Is that the VW? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Uh, you have to have classic cars, man. Like Trouble. an Impala. <laughs> <laughs> Impala. Yeah. Or... And he this didn't have any puppy. fucking hydraulics on it or anything. I mean, if they're going to go full Mexican, yeah. you know, mullet shit, they should have, he should have had the <laughs> fucking the pointy cowboy still, boots they... and shit. And like all that kind they, of stuff. They, yeah, they still try to like um, tie it in too to being a little gay. Because he's crying <laughs> all the time. <laughs> what the hell is... This obsession was not there in the first movie. Okay, it's really obvious here. And that was a terribly like the car was. We get it. We got it. And like and like I said, um, nobody drives around like that. Okay. Uh, I hope you guys like cock sandwiches because oh. we're gonna be eating them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I uh, you know who can pull off this Tarantino style dialogue. Tarantino. Troy Duffy must have must have had a Pulp Fiction on a loop when he wrote the turd. Only Tarantino can write that style of dialogue. I mean, there's other writers that can do it, obviously, more effectively than this. But you can tell when he's just aping another screenwriter. It's really obvious, guys, with a lot of these lines. None of them really lands. And I don't know. I guess the issue is with the writing itself, but it's also with a lot of these actors who can't deliver the no, lines. I, I feel, no, I feel like a lot of them were completely, like, they knew exactly how shitty the script was, and they were like, Okay. Oh, God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, all right. Here's the plan, which will involve uh, an, 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 an unnecessary oof, an unfunny grindhouse style fantasy sequence for no other reason to pat out the running time. 28 minute mark. So these guys get back in town. Obviously, they're already teamed up with the Mexican who has he has connections in town. That's gonna, they're going to help him out. He wants to be part of the team, which is which is kind of funny in of itself. The first place they have to go to is to kind of like get the attention of the Italian mob and knock out a bunch of cocaine runners or wherever the hell they are. But there's a fair Thanks, Didi. Didi's the drug expert tonight on the show. There you uh, go. Yeah. <laughs> no, I. You know what? I will say I did like about how um, Sean uh, Patrick Flannery's character like tasted the drugs. He did the classic cop tasting the drug. Yeah. Thing. yeah. But, and, but his brother said, "How do you fucking know?" But the thing is, they have a fantasy scene about what's going to happen, and then they go back to them. There's no reason for that fantasy scene to even be there, uh, because then we have to watch the scene again, you know, twice in a different sequence. But uh, we'll keep going. Uh, let's send them one right back. Uh, cue the commercial big fade out, guys, at the 30 minute mark, so we can recap the slow motion action scene later, like I just mentioned, while Julie Benz uh, bleeds our ears every time she opens her mouth. Um, yeah, again, again, this, we don't get to see the scene because we saw the fantasy sequence and we don't get to see the actual scene. But then after the fact, Julie right. Benz comes in and then details what happens. And then we see the scene again. Uh, yeah. Jesus, can I just say no, something no, that's no, ironic no. about this entire scene is Julie Benz uh, is going on and on about how the killer is a midget and how short <laughs> he is. She's fucking <laughs> five foot four. That's, that's 
gross about how what qualifies as abnormally short for a man. That's kind of short. He's as tall That's as I am. Gross. He's as tall as I am. I'm five five. He was a. She should have said minion, really, because minion. A minion. A minion. <laughs> no, but it's just hey. so sad. Like projecting, projecting, projecting. Hey, I think Tone's the shortest of all of us. I'm barely five one, and I can uh, tell you right now, uh, I love yeah. it. I love a short man. What's it's, up? I bet you do. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I've dated people short. Like, what is it with like men and this obsession with like short, like being well, short? Like, so this this killer. There's the whoever That's this killer is. This is his whole shit. Whole thing. Yeah. 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 So he, and he gets special shoes, which I'm assuming like Tom Cruise is. Yeah. Uh, is aware. He's probably um, the inventor of those. He yeah. The yeah. trademark. Uh, how you doing, fuck ass? I'm Romeo. <laughs> it's just a sampling of the quality dialogue from writer director Troy Duffy. Enjoy, folks. <laughs> um, it's a hideout uh, where we'll act like complete drunken idiots for the next few minutes to fill out the scene. Uh, on a related note, this scene is what it's like each week here in the restroom. Uh, I don't know the minute mark on that one. drunk montage was so unnecessary. Uh, Why? I was just table, waiting right for there. them to have like a wet t-shirt contest or a pillow fight or something. I mean, what are we doing a with this? A pillow fight montage? would have been fun. A pillow fight would have been awesome. <laughs> yeah, a yeah. pillow fight would have been awesome. They finished the opening action sequence. Now they have to have a hideout and they meet up with another Irish guy who has a bar. And above the bar, he there's a lot. Lo- yeah, yeah. That's yeah. supposed to be funny. Yeah. It's not funny. Above the bar, there's a pool table and a hideout where they get, just keep, they get drunk for no reason. And they have all these random sequences, which aren't funny and aren't interesting and aren't really good for character development. We don't care. We don't care about any of this, what's happening on screen. But okay. New York City, 1958. God damn it. Oh. Billy Connolly uh, sports his best Gandalf look, Irish Gandalf, I'm sorry, as he sits in the front of a fire and kicks off an unnecessary flashback sequence in a film that's already. Yeah, this was really weird. I got lost here. It was so it was dumb. Boy, it Duffy, made no uh, sense. He was writing The Godfather. Like, why do we have to? There's a couple of these. This is the first one. If they cut out all this stupid flashback, we understand what the like. We understand where the story goes at the end of it. But there's a better way to do this. But you don't have yeah. you 38 minutes in, and then stop your film cold to do a flashback sequence in 1958. Nobody and plays about why Billy Connolly. This they, they kept around just to have him in the movie because his he was basically done at the beginning of the film. But he keeps coming back, and then they have to shove him at the end uh, action scene. We'll get to that. No spoilers. Well, they, they had to they had to show his backstory, which honestly nobody really cared about. It did seem unnecessary. I had no idea. No, what, it's totally you know. necessary for the plot of this film, and we cannot right. talk about that until we get to the very end. Because if you don't know this backstory, the ending would make no fucking sense. That's, that's I, true, okay, but, but there could have been a better way to do. No, that. I agree with you. Sorry, they could have introduced it. I don't want to see a whole prequel about a best uh any of these guys takes you out he gets his palms crossed uh jesus even the mexican accents in this film are terrible it's like being trapped inside a mall food court for two hours that was the uh so he takes them to, the mexican guy takes him to another mexican guy inside a mexican bar it's his couple, uncle it's his uncle restaurant. it's really bad guy john i can't believe you weren't offended on at least on three different levels on that one because that guy is he's even worse than the other guy was who's not even mexican Clifton yeah. Cotton. Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think he is. Clifton what Cotton. Is he? I don't think he is. I don't think he's Mexican. Uh, I'm going to have to disagree. That accent? Yeah, I, don't, I don't know what it was. Well, he's, yeah. first of all, I Clifton, think it was Clifton direction. Collins Jr. is from Los Angeles. That doesn't necessarily mean, but he is a. He, in according to his IMDb, okay, um, he says Gonzalez. it was he was grew up destined to become part of the Latino entertainment industry. His great grandparents oh. on his mother's side were a Mexican trumpet player and a Spanish okay. dancer. He's double dipping in the Latino world, so he's he that. is the grandson of actor Pedro Gonzalez Gonzalez. Okay, all right, uh, is okay, that Mexican right. enough for you? Hmm. Panic Room. Now nah, the other one. Uh, the screenwriter dialogue brought to you courtesy of uh, cinephile Troy Duffy. Not many people are going to get that one. They get talking about Panic Room uh, because what mm. does it holds up in a pan- Yeah, I, I know. think a I, lot I, more people have seen Panic Room uh, than have seen this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you're actually right. That uh, was a weird scene, too, in the junkyard. Was, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what they were talking about. That's a, yeah, there's like yeah. this whole off kilter scenes that it doesn't gel with any of the rest because of the movie. These are the filming locations that the Duffy's got to, like, could get a fucking <laughs> permit for. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh-huh. It's free. That's a free. I mean, they had an $8 million thing. budget. And it made somehow, don't fucking ask me, ten million dollars. <laughs> yeah, really? Well, we we contributed to it, but well, like, like we, that's pay later. Per view, pay, like no pay per view and stuff like that. Irish Gandalf kicks off unnecessary flashback number two around the fifty minute mark. Could they give Connolly anything better to do than to kickstart other scenes? He is a stand-up comedian. I wish they would give him something funny to do. 
he's just so straight in this film, and he's always just there as the intro sequences that are with the with the fun, you know, black and white sequences. Which, oh, god damn it! Uh, how do David? Uh, ben snaps open that snazzy flip phone like it's 2009. Oh wait, it is 2009. Never mind. 57 minute mark on that. <laughs> oh my gosh, I thought the razor. I think right. Was it like a razor? Awesome. Yeah, yeah. It was a razor, and I thought the exact. <laughs> Yep. So they're they're trying to uh we're, Ben's has a there's a character shift in her as we find out what she's really about shortly very shortly uh because basically they're trying to hide out the, the Italian guys are trying to lock these guys down and it's just kind of back and forth thing and then Connolly's doing the flashbacks so there we go uh these dagos are getting antsy whoo Phil manages to roll out more ethnic stereotypes than I do here on the show every week hey that's saying something I, oh, boy. That's saying something. I'm not I, I mean I'm <laughs> saying. <laughs> You look think, like a hippie. I you think like I'm hippie. the road. Yeah, right. Do you post you? No, does everybody say dagos anymore? I don't even think that's even used. Yeah, I didn't, Nobody I, even I, knows what that means that anymore. Word, yeah. Worse than the fucking racial slurs and the homophobia and the misogyny was the terrible practical effects. They didn't do any CGI. There was no post-production. This is all practical effects on set. And several times during these gunfight scenes, the squibs are going off and there's no powder coming out of the guns whatsoever. <laughs> Like no muzzle flash. Uh, well, and yeah. also like it explodes and then they don't react until I know. like half One a guy got shot later. 27 times it and he was still so moving. so bad. Why are you doing this in slow motion? It oh, makes God. it more. So There's much. a lot of slow motion. That's terrible slow so motion. So much too. slow yeah, motion. So many wires are seen. And then you see like squib packs under their fucking <laughs> shirts. Yes. I was like, this is like seriously like high school play level. But like, <laughs> like, like a really oh, no. poor high school where someone's it's just like, like, stabbing no, it's like a I've ketchup from the Adams family. Uh, it's Irish. It means you're fucked. Uh, let's repeat this uh, Italian mass killing scene in slow motion. There you go, guys. Around the 59 minute mark, just in case you missed it the first time. Uh, that's when they yeah, they end up trapping the guys in the bar. Uh, the yeah. Italian- Six or eight of them, I think, and these guys sneak through the kitchen and then uh, just end up killing them all just to make a statement. Uh, just more people. Again, slow motion, like Chris said, squib packs, wires, it's nothing so matching bad. up. You have to do it in one shot. You can't afford to do it again, so everything's got to be done in one take. I know, but they could have at least like paid uh, someone uh, to CGI out some of this shit or put some muzzle funny. flashes in or something. He wow. burned all his bridges. He has no. He had to. He could have found. He, he could have found someone on Craigslist. Like, he could have Craigslist this and like. Oh even, god. Does not even Lloyd. Bridges with Andrew. <laughs> okay. <Lloyd> Bridges. <laughs> uh, yeah, this guy's so down and out. He probably would have done this show just to come on and talk about his film because yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, this simply won't do. Uh, Ben's just nails on a chalkboard accent, or the fact the film turns into a music video for a moment so Ben's can smirk at the camera at the hour and three minute mark. What the fuck happened there? Where she's walking through that same scene in slow motion. While they're shooting at each other? This you is like her explaining it. She's oh, putting yeah. herself into it. Yeah. It's so stupid. I, they did that in the first movie uh, with Will and Defoe, that, and it was actually really well done with a lot more money. And yeah, it and they had awesome. post-production and shit, too. Yeah, well. no, and well, and also, he he listened to classical music while he was, like, and it looked really cool. Okay, so, all right, so that's from the first one. All right. Cause yeah, I, I, this is where, again, I thought, oh, this is the sort of a self-parody. You know, this is making fun of these kinds of movies. We are going to rip this city a new asshole. Uh, Judd Nelson channels his inner uh, screaming Gary Oldman for most of the dialogue. Oh, my God. He just starts, yeah, he screams the back end of all of his uh, lines. Because now he's trapped up in this um, high-rise with all his buddies, and he has oh, a panic. Oh, no, he's trapped with a full buffet of fucking food and, like, electricity and plumbing. And, yeah. I, I remember, the, it looked like a cocktail reception from the movie Big. <laughs> yeah. But can I just say something? They're Italian. There's not one piece of Italian food there for them. Uh, allow me to make a suggestion. Uh, 70s porn music around the hour and 10-minute mark uh, over the guns revealed maybe uh, maybe the funniest moment in the film. And I then I wrote May. Uh, that's when they had to go get um, more weapons, right? The, the guys, and they had that 70s. When they were opening up the guns, remember they were opening up the cases in that 70s porn oh, music? Oh, yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a callback right. to the first film. Oh, okay, that's... Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, fine, but I'm going to take funny. a crack at it first. Uh, why do we have to revisit every one of the action scenes after the fact? I mentioned this before, I'm going to mention it again. That's like narrating what happened during sex after everyone has come. Hour and 12 minute mark. I don't <laughs> understand oh, my goodness. why we have to... Yeah, why can't they just show that in real time and that's it. They cut to the beginning of the scene. They cut away from it completely, so you don't see the scene. And then we see the end scene. We, they cut to the end of the scene. And then we have to go back and have uh, Julie Benz with her stupid-ass accent, uh, the Sarah oh, Polnack. And, and, 
Wayne's no, and her slutty uh, John Wayne Halloween it's costume. It's hard to imagine just a few hours ago it was like the OK Corral up in here. So let's just have Julie Benz decked out like Annie Oakley and twirling a gun for no reason whatsoever on oh the hour and 18 minute mark. Guys, if you're wondering what Sarah Poulton would look like on Halloween, wonder no more. Rude. See, this, is oh, the, this is the crazy, over-the-top self-parody <laughs> part. Rude. I look like a banana on Halloween. Thank you very much. <laughs> I don't know. I think it was pretty good in that outfit. I think that was pretty much you at that point. But all right, well, we can go with that. Uh, we'll see. I did have that jacket in the 90s, though. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> too far off on that one. I didn't think it was that rude. Uh, what, what, Guys, what the fuck is she doing in this sequence? She's a I don't cowgirl. Know. <laughs> Thanks, She's a Sarah. naughty, naughty cowgirl <laughs> reenacting the OK Corral. Yeah, in a movie that has nothing to do with the OK Corral or any other western, for that matter. Well, and that what? thirty second like gun slinging, like why is she uh, doing all this gun twirling and then rolling it up on her sleeve? Like I was just waiting for her to lick the gun, you uh, know. <laughs> Taking in her mouth like she's sucking a dick, right? I uh, understand. I get that. I don't understand why she's why they had her trained to do all this stuff when it has nothing to do with the I story. I mean, I mean, did Cinemax fund this movie? <laughs> like, I don't get it. This was the OK Corral at the Golden Corral. <laughs> all right, that was her contribution. I'll, I'll be the- here all all episode. Uh, ding dong, motherfuckers! Ding dong. Well, that tagline was worth waiting for. Oh boy. Terrible. After all that. Uh, so basically, she's... Yeah, but what was the one he made before that? Uh, who ordered the whoop-ass fajita? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's where it was. That, that, was, was, that, that was funny. How, that did, was a... how did Chili's not capitalize on that? <laughs> uh, where's the... So, oh, guys, if you're wondering for us to really finish out the explanation of why she's dressed like Annie Oakley, it's, she's going through the crime scene again, and again, that's just in her mind, I guess that's how she, she right. imagined doesn't really make any sense. I really, it doesn't make was sense. Was that what it was? I was, yeah, I thought yeah. I was smoking way too much weed at the time. But, whoa. Yeah, yeah. Well, you guys must have been fucking baked. It's, 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 <laughs> I don't know what you guys were smoking, but man, you guys were in a good mood when you watched it because this is not the film that you remember it to be. Uh, where, where's the old man? Irish Gandalf bursts into the bar around the hour and 24 minute mark like he's appearing in a beer commercial. Uh, so, um, Billy Connolly makes his way over to the Americas. We don't care how he got there. He just magically appears. <laughs> And yeah, he gets yeah. the exact time he, he needs to be. take in the airplane. <laughs> they had modern flight back then. They in had two- one plane ticket and he had to use it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so he gets there at the bar at the exact time he needs to be. Because I guess the uh, the midget, or not, the minion, the, the Mexican, the, he's not Mexican. Huh? There's he's a minion Italian. guy. He's, he's Italian. Italian. He's a yeah. Sicilian. He's Italian and he's 5'5". Five five. Right, he's the same right. height as me. Which is a little taller than the last guy I dated, if it makes you guys feel um, hey, <laughs> just to throw that out there. All right, thank you. So he shows up in this bar to take out the, these guys. Uh, he's the he's the killer who killed the priest at the beginning of the film. He's this killer. who's uh, He's under orders from somebody else. We don't know who this mysterious guy is. We're going to find out. It has to do with the flashbacks. Yeah. It's to explain, but we will. Trust me, I will wrap this all up in a neat, in a neat tight Irish bow for you at the end of it. Uh, Daddy's working uh, at, at trying to get information out of... Uh, uh, minion Stanley Tucci <laughs> via Russian roulette. <laughs> so, yes. He will always be the guy who asked Lindsay Lohan if she wanted her muffin butter. <laughs> oh, really? Not. Okay, so th- if you want to go back to Mean Girls, he was in that film as well. He had hair, though, in that film. He does not have well, hair. Well, he had hair at one point in this, too. They have the worst skull cap on him of all yeah, time. I, I, it's I, like, I, oh, I, my God. <laughs> they got that right at, like, the fucking Halloween store and shit. That gives me a hard on, but not in a gay way or anything. Uh, no, uh, homo. no, no really homo, sure. no homo, no homo. Seriously, that should have been the real working title of this film. No homo. Blue Dog Saints too. No homo. <laughs> Uh, I think we wrote a better film right there. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of homo in this, guys. Uh, yeah, all right. I'm sorry. Oh, there's a lot of no homo in this. Like, they're so paranoid. Uh, I'm sorry. This was all my fault. Uh, cue flashback number three to Irish Gandalf's story that we could care less about around the hour and 30-minute mark. One Again, yeah. the third God final flashback. So I guess let me recap the story. That he was a cobbler and worked with his father, or leather, a leather smith, and worked with his Sandler. father. In 19, yeah, right. In 1958, his father got killed by uh, by the Italian mob or something like that. Um, so anyway, uh, so as a result, he becomes an assassin who's working with his partner, who also worked at the shop. Uh, and these two guys work together to kill off uh, Italian bad guys. Uh, and that was the three flashbacks we saw the progression. And eventually, he gets betrayed. 
Oh uh, well, I guess spoilers. I can't really. So that's where we're at right now. So we got we got. Well, and left. it's implied that like this guy can't control his need right. to kill. Right, right. The, that's the Billy Cullen killer. You are a born killer. Uh, e, and here we go. Here's the reveal, folks. E2 writers, uh, Peter Fonda finally shows up on screen around the hour and 38 minute mark as Irish Gandalf's former partner, sporting perhaps the best accent in the entire film. Of course, uh, this ain't saying much, what? considering it still sounds like he's in a pasta sauce uh, commercial. Yeah, I, I, I had a, I had a retcon that as I wrote it and I was listening to it. He sounded all right initially, but then I was like, ooh, no, he's just as bad as everybody else. Why did this film get redubbed? Like, they should have just had, like, Japanese people come in and redub it. Or Roberto Benigni. Roberto Benigni could just come in. Roberto Benigni was awesome. They cast me out, just like in a bad Hammer Horror film. Uh, hey, Peter Cushing called. Uh, he'd like his cheesy performance back. Uh, that's uh, Mr. Uh, Peter Fonda hamming it up at the back end of this movie. Uh, I guess it has been for what one day of shooting, two days tops. Oh my I mean, god, he was, he was yeah. so. Was it? Can worth I just say it? the like, most distracting thing in his scenes was his face wig for his, uh, yeah. you know, his goatee. You could see the webbing right under his oh nose. They didn't god. even like so trim it. it. it they didn't even so trim weird. it. All right, so we we're learning a lot here, folks. Uh, oh in case you're wondering what the uh, oh shit. In case you were wondering what the God damn it. In case you were wondering what the definition of a... God damn it. In case you were wondering what the definition of a talking villain scene is... I mean, I can't talk in this one. Look no further than the seven-minute-long accent showdown. Fuck that joke. All right. The talking villain is basically Peter Fonda. He rolls... He runs his mouth explaining everything in case you were too stupid to figure it out for the last hour and 36 minutes or 45 minutes, whatever it is. Uh, he explains that why he betrayed... Uh, Billy Connolly, why Billy Connolly ended up in jail because he betrayed him. He ended up in jail. Where this guy's been, where they've been. Nobody, guys, you're not missing. And you religious techno music around the hour and 45 minute mark as slow motion takes over so we can see uh, just how bad a climactic gunfight can be shot. This end sequence is absolutely terrible, guys. This is a terrible editing, staging, execution, like Chris was saying. It's a one shot deal, you know, with uh, wires and squibs. You get to see how bad the practical effects are. Like, I don't Terrible. get it. No, it's, I, awesome. I, it's so bad. I mean, honestly, I really feel like they hired, like, toddlers or possibly preschoolers uh, to do these practical effects. And then the editing oh is, like, like the worst. Right. Like you have two guys. You have a guy, and they're all shooting uh, with the, a gun in each hand. First of all, that's really bad aim. If you, guy, if you ever had, if you ever shot a gun, you really need two hands to shoot one gun. If you put one gun in each hand, your aim's going to be way off. So they have shots of the guy because it looks cooler, uh, arguably. But the problem is they do the, you know, the medium shot of them shooting the guns into the camera. They do the reverse shot, and it's just one random fucking guy. Yeah, but these Flip guns are also, like, these guns are also semi-automatics, these handguns they have. So, like, okay, every time they're doing the slow-mo, you think it's they're just pulling the trigger, and then when they speed it up a little bit, it's like, you know, so you that know they're just holding so it down. They would have run out of bullets in, like, two seconds. Safety tip, guys. If you plan to leap off of a roof and fall through a glass greenhouse roof, prepare to get injured. These two idiots are not yeah. spiking. So that's how they enter the scene. The two Irish guys, uh, Flat Powder and uh, Daryl Dixon, they leap from a what? At least a third story fucking roof, and maybe fourth story, and they fall straight down uh -huh. through a plate glass greenhouse roof, which would have killed them. And then they land on a fountain, which would have probably killed, broke their legs. Uh, but they're fine. They just get up and start shooting everybody like else. Like the A team. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and all, yeah, and all crazy the stunts and the, nobody gets hurt. And all the bullets go into the dust. Uh, yeah. no, no, Dad. Rita's and uh, Flannery look like they're laughing. There you go. More than crying over Irish Gandalf's uh, death scene. Yeah, okay, uh, right. Who's that? Who mentioned that earlier? Um, it must have broke character because I. It, how can you take any of this seriously? What you're doing? It's just terrible. Uh, he died. Irish Gandalf does get shot. He has the vest. I'm not going to explain the vest. Fuck the vest. Anyway, he ends up getting killed. I will say it looked like Norman Reedus was like, oh, my God, this is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, he must have known. He had, like, Jimmy Fallon face. Uh, the Lord works in mysterious ways, my dear. Well, the Lord should have told the hair and makeup person on this shoot to work a little harder on uh, Julie Benz's wig at the end of this movie. She looks like she just stepped out of a goth nightclub on Seniors Night. I don't know, 49 <laughs> minutes. Oh, so basically, she's on her way. They try to squirrel her away. She ends up w ends up working with them. That was her critical turn in the film. And she's actually in right. with the Irish guys, and yeah. she's help she's helping them out. We should have mentioned that a lot earlier. And then she disappears in the mm -hmm. film. 
and turns up at the yeah right exactly with the stupid wig on so they're squirreling her way to safety we should mention that Rita's and uh daryl or daryl dixon and uh powder get they do get injured and they do get arrested by the way because the cops do show up at the end of this bloodbath everybody gets killed including well, uh, honda and um and uh, but they get they arrested. choose to drop their guns yeah, they, yeah, right. They choose. Yeah. So they do live, and as a result, Julie Benz is trying to get out of the country, and the uh, the Catholic Church is trying to help her out with there. Uh, and he says, "I well, here's this line. I hear they party pretty hard at that monastery, because that's where she's going. And then I wrote, yeah. Jesus Christ, even the great Willem Dafoe is saddled with a terrible accent for his uh, two-minute cameo. No, he the- wasn't. No, that was his voice. He was voice. great. That's he his- could do no wrong. That Seriously, empty- that made me realize like how much he made the first movie. I are, totally agree. A little birdie tells me they're going to be just fine. Well, our ears, however, are ne- will never be fine after suffering through two hours of some of the worst accents ever captured on camera. That's how the film ends up. Uh, well, and also, we like Clifton Collins Jr. is still basically on life support, but oh, hey, fuck him. Yeah, fuck him. Uh, they and they had to, <laughs> to bust these two guys out of jail. Uh, and there's gonna be, a, I guess, a third film, which God, thank God, they never made. No, uh, no, it's still yeah. coming. It's still coming. What? As of last year, it's still coming out. And Norman uh-huh. Reedus confirmed on a Reddit AMA that it is definitely in the works already. Really? Oh my! No. It's supposed to be the film is supposed to be called <laughs> yeah, The Boondock Saints Three Legion. Uh, crest on credits. Nothing. But except the yeah. except the threat of a third fucking movie. Well, in this they just—I mean, they set that up at the end of the movie. I will watch it if uh, Willem oh, Dafoe's oh, in it. Really? Well, they're already saying that you know um, they haven't confirmed casting. That's that's what I was. You know, looking yeah, because nobody wants to come back for it. It fucking sucks. Nobody wants to come back. No, I no, I wow. was angry that Willem Dafoe was actually in this because I was ready. I no, I was ready to hate this. Oh man! And got- then he came back, and I remembered like how entertaining his character was in the first movie, and I was like, "God, oh, absolutely that's terrible, funny. absolutely dreadful, dreadful sequel or to to a franchise. Uh, this is just one of the worst dreadful ones. sequel to a movie you've never seen the first of. Exactly, a dreadful sequel film that I didn't bother to watch the first fucking one. But uh, that you know, I guess, but everybody's uh, raving, you know, dick sucking the first. The first one. one is so good, I cannot tell back. you. No, I mean, but okay, but you need to see the documentary. Yeah, I will. Yeah, that folks, there is a documentary. Uh, what's the name of it, uh, Griff? Overnight. Overnight. If you want to go check that out, folks, before you suffer through this film. Uh, have at it. That might huh. that might explain it. Uh, yeah, might explain go with something. Might explain a lot. So, uh, oh my God, that was it. There you go, folks. That is uh, that is uh, what the hell we watched. The Boondock Saints two, All Saints Day, or Electric Boogaloo, whichever you want to call it. Uh, we took it out and played with it a lot longer. We should have. Can we flush it, ladies and gentlemen? Can we please, please flush it? Sure. Sure. Why not? Oh God, you have one job is to come up with a I'll one. I'll get you to wait oh. here. Right, Don't clog you. the toilet. All right, I guess I'm gonna have a whole new I'm gonna have a whole new team next week. Uh, there you go. <laughs> consider, <laughs> you're lost. <laughs> consider it. <laughs> Finally, uh, we don't have to watch these movies for free. <laughs> Dobby oh has been God. giving clothes by master. Dobby uh, is free. Every fucking week. I want to thank my lovely, my lovely co-cinematic flushers, Midwest movie mogul, Colleen Griffin, Raging Buddha, B-movie queen, Nora Crest, and Sassy Cinephile of this airport. A great job, as always, lady. Thank our extended co-flushers and pretty much family at this point here in the restroom. Oh, the generous oh. Janet Didi from uh, More Brains thank than the you. Gym. We appreciate it. Uh, even though you guys kind of like this, we're going to kind of forgive you because I think you guys are kind of baked when you watch this. So that made... <laughs> How did your critical judgments? We thought it was it was meant to be bad. You know, I we, thought it was meant to so, be, you know, over the top. So and, we gave and, you some slack. You yeah. Know? We no, thought, no, okay, actually, it. I, I want to talk to you guys after you, like, uh, watch, it's watch, not the show. Do, no, I watched the documentary, like, okay. outside of this podcast. Right, we'll watch the watch, documentary. Yeah. Watch the first one, and I'd like to talk about it. There you go, folks. Uh, all right, so they did a great job, and of course they're going to be back again, and we're going to be back next week to torture you with something else. Until then, say goodbye, ladies and gentlemen. Bye. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, keep it going, guys. Come on. Bye. 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 Oh, my God. Hi, this is Sarah Poulton, and I want to thank you for listening to this week and every week as we flush these turds down our cinematic bowl here in the restroom. And by turds... I mean the movies, not my ex-boyfriends. If you haven't already, please subscribe to us on iTunes and Google Play Music so we can attract more listeners and so you don't miss a single episode. We love feedback, so email us at signalsoffury at gmail.com with your comments and suggestions for future flushes. Also, be sure to check out our home restroom on the net, signalsoffury.com. Until next time, remember, we're here to flush it. 
so you don't have to see it. I'm Sarah Poulton, and this has been the award-winning Soiled Restroom Cinema. 